Hi, I'm Alan Sides, and I'm glad to be here to talk about our new plugin with Waves. I'm the owner and designer of the Ocean Way Studio Complexes, and I've been doing this since 1974. As a recording engineer, I've worked on close to a thousand albums. I'm also a speaker designer. I'm really a sound guy. To me, the most single important aspect of what I do is sonics. I am almost fanatical about quality and definition and clarity and musicality. The single most important thing, you know, as a mixer and as a musician, is that if I hear everything in a reasonable fashion, then everything I do is right. If I'm not hearing correctly, it's a fight all the way. And if you're in an environment that's acoustically deficient, where there's live room and all the other problems, obviously if you can put those headphones on, you'll make those issues. But there's things you can't hear on headphones. So the premise of this plugin really is it opens windows sonically. It lets you hear in a way that you just can't hear with a straight set of headphones. It corrects a lot of the difficult issues in regards to low frequency, in regards to setting ambient levels of space. So by creating this ambience of this really wonderful control room, it makes it easy to define the most important issues of what makes a mix great. In creating the Ocean Ray rooms, it was always about the sound. All of the studios that we build over the years, the single most important thing were the monitor systems that we've created from scratch. I was a sound fanatic from beginning, and I like things that sound open and clear and natural. We're not looking for a hype, we're looking for an accurate representation of what the music is. I mean, there's nothing worse than you've worked hard on a mix, you've created this thing, you left the studio, you played in your car and go, oh my God, the second chorus, I didn't get this right, the kick drum needs more 40 hertz. This is so. So hearing is everything. It's the most single important thing that you can you have. Now our studios when we built Ocean Way Nashville, it was a unique opportunity because the space was so amazing. I had found this sort of abandoned church on Music Row. And the guy was a crooked evangelist owner and he was in jail and this thing was all tied up. And so I snuck in a back window and I walked in this 1850s church and rectory building and I said, this place is ridiculous. And so I saw, you know, I said, the acoustics were just, even as it existed, were great. Ocean Way Nashville, I think, is quite a statement. You know, it's an amazing space. But Control Room Studio A is one of the most unique environments, acoustic environments, that I've heard as an engineer. And I've worked at every studio you can imagine. Because I was able to build the Control Room completely from scratch, I finally had the opportunity to build exactly what I want. There's no limitations in space. Like one of the things we had is from the front wall to the rear wall, we have 32 feet. So we can develop a low frequency wave that's serious, you know, with nothing coming back off the rear wall. The other thing was, the ceilings were high enough and the side walls were splayed and far enough apart that I could eliminate first order reflections from the ceiling and side walls so that you get a very natural ambience. If you're sitting at the console, you're really hearing mostly direct sound, but you do hear, you do hear the air of the space around you. The other thing that I love attack and impact, and so I need speakers that are fast and have great transient performance and deliver dynamics. Because I come from that school of the bigger, the bigger it is, the better it is. I like bigger than life. We built the first system for Michael Jackson and Quincy Jones. They basically wanted a full big multi-channel system. Each channel is 11 feet high and seven feet wide. It's a pretty crazy system, but it's extremely high fidelity. And then Dr. Dre moved in and we did the M&M records and stuff on those same speaker systems. And so in this particular plugin, we use two different monitor systems. One is our HR1 system and one is the HR5s. HR5 is our smallest, least expensive speaker, but it's a very fun, snappy, very clear speaker. And then the big system is pretty crazy. It's a very unique system. It has the low frequency that is in the soffit. There's a three channel system. It's twin 15s in a straight horn, low frequency enclosure, and then a matching, identical matching concentrativity, high frequency horn. And the drivers are all in the exact physical plane. And then we have a direct rating tweeter, which is an aluminum dome with an 18,000 Gauss magnetic structure that crosses over 10K and up. And then we have four additional 15s that sit below the window for each of the LCR channels. But because uh, it has, that one has 100 degrees of perfect linear dispersion, you walk around the room, it sounds the same anywhere you are. And the concept of having constant activity, perfectly symmetrical wave fronts for both low frequency and high frequency. Because here's the interesting thing, if you think in terms of a loudspeaker, if you have a horn, and even if the horn has a reasonably decent dispersion, say it has 60 degrees or 70 degrees, that's fine, but now you have a woofer just sitting there below it. It's not in a straight horn, just sitting out thing. That woofer has, at best, 40 degrees of usable dispersion. So as soon as you get more than 20 degrees off axis, the sound of the voice changes completely. But if I can get that woofer by putting it into a straight horn and cutting it off, I can actually now get 100 degrees out of the woofer that matches the high frequency exactly. 
and the high frequency element and the mid bass elements are an exact symmetry. So the phase line is perfect. So as you move across, nothing changes. It stays symmetrical. The other thing too, as I said, is also having the two speakers be really within almost a dB of each other, meaning plus or minus or half or plus or minus 0.65 dB, so that when you're listening in a stereo space and you're setting your reverb levels and you're putting guitar and you're panning it, everything is just dead on. It's completely accurate. And I think that's critical in creating a great mix, is to be able to have to define those issues in a way that is immediately apparent. Because I, I keep saying this, if, if you're hearing well, you're, it's, just, it's so easy to do it right. It's, it's, it's no fight at all. And the other concept too is that in regards to ambience and space, if you're mixing on a set of headphones, a lot of times because it's so close to your ears, you may create a more ambient environment, but then listen to your speaker and say, well, you know, it's a little distant sounding. It doesn't have enough attack and punch. On the headphones, that was fine, but now it sounds too distant. I'm not quite hearing these things in the right proportion. And now all of a sudden, I can hear it. I can hear it, I can define it, I can correct it, and then life's, life's good. And so part of what this whole premise is about is to try to give you that fact on headphones, to give you that little extra space to allow you to mix in a way that's more natural. It really comes down to the most important aspect of this is translation, meaning that you've created something and you've really finessed it and you think you've got everything in just the right space and you think you've got just the right amount of low bass and definition and tack is all fine. And then you go and you play it in your car and you go, oh my God, it doesn't have what I thought it did. I thought it had more low bass. I thought the backgrounds, they didn't pop. And or you listen on your earbuds and the guy like, there's things I missed. Well, that's all because the monitors are not giving an accurate representation of, of what you're doing. And creating this plugin all relates to be able to have a situation where you could actually put a set of headphones on and it sounds like you're sitting in this amazing control room with an amazing set of speakers in front of you. Say that you were a young person and all you had was a little computer, a laptop, and you got two little speakers and your room's super live. And really you're not hearing well because the space is not very good. It's, it's, a, it's a tough environment. You're getting all these reflections. But if you can put a set of headphones on and have just the right ambience within the phones, you eliminate all the problems. It makes life very easy. Once Waves completed the initial setup, to be honest with you, I was a little, I questioned how this would work. And when I listened to it, I was like, this is pretty astonishing, actually. It was a phenomenally accurate production of what we created in Studio A in Oshway Nashville. So I think we created something that, that is extremely useful for the mixer looking to define the perfect version of what they've created. This is really an invaluable tool.